in a normal, well-kept houses and apartments, in 99 and 9% of cases, people are bitten by representatives of 9 groups of arthropod parasites. These are bed bugs, fleas, mosquitoes, head lice, body lice, pubic lice, gamazit mites, rat mites, chicken mites and some others, argus ticks, pigeon ticks, fowl ticks and others, and itch mites that cause scabies. In some rare cases you may be bitten by several species at once, for example fleas and bed bugs. But in reality you have to try very hard to have several of these arthropod friends in your house together. In well-kept human housing two or more types of biting and blood-sucking parasites almost never live. In addition, in some countries and some regions people in homes may be bitten by some very specific parasites. In the north, companions of the nut may fly into houses. In the tropics, people may be bitten by various mites. In some countries in South America, especially in rural areas, people suffer from kissing bugs. Moreover, according to the letters and comments, many people are even bitten by cockroaches. I did not believe it before until my viewer sent me a video with uh, biting cockroaches and the consequences of their bites. So it's true, cockroaches can bite too, but they do it extremely rarely and you are probably not bitten by them in normal living space. I will talk about cockroach bites later. The point is that there are plenty of biting arthropods around the world, but compared to the amount of bites that these guys leave, the bites of all other parasites are a drop in the bucket. I repeat, if we talk about bites that appear inside human housing. Therefore, if it suddenly turns out that some very rare parasite pesters you at your home, then you can consider yourself some kind of lucky. After all, few people can boast that they were bitten at home by red velvet mites or by jigger fleas. So if you get bitten on a regular basis, you almost certainly need to identify parasites from these nine groups. And that is actually not very difficult. I will explain how to do it in a moment. But before that, the most important thing to know is that it is impossible to identify parasites that left the bite only by the appearance of the bite. I know you would like to think that, for example, a bed bug bite looks like this and a flea bite looks like something else. And then you look at your bite you see the blister and you know for sure it's a bed bug or a mosquito or something else. But alas, this does not work like that because the appearance of the bite depends more on the individual reaction of the organism of a particular bitten person than on any distinctive features of the insect. And the body of one person reacts approximately the same to the bites of different parasitic insects. That is, you will most likely have approximately the same blisters at the site of bites from mosquitoes, bed bugs or fleas. But the individual sensitivity of different people to the bites of the same insects can vary so much that it makes almost meaningless any attempt to somehow compare these bites with each other and standardize them. For example, I have no reaction at all to flea and bed bug bites. I specially checked. I put bed bugs on my hand, waited until they sucked blood, took them off, checked the bite site, and there were no blisters, no bumps, no irritation. But other people get itchy blisters after being bitten by bed bugs, and some may even get several allergies. And because of such a difference in reactions, it is impossible to say that the bites of some parasites look exactly like this and others look exactly different. And therefore, by the way, when you send me a photo with red blisters and ask what bit you like that, I with all my desire cannot determine on which bite specifically your body reacted this way. So once again, it is impossible to determine the parasite by the appearance of the bite. But parasite can be identified by the circumstances in which they bite you. Because each parasite has its own biology, lives in a certain way, bites at a certain time, usually in certain places and with a certain frequency. And if these circumstances are revealed, then you can understand what exactly is parasitizing you. So, first of all, remember, do bites appear when you are in a particular place in the house? or do you get bitten wherever you are and whatever you do? 
It may seem strange, but we constantly receive letters and comments with questions about what buys a person in the house and in the office and in the car and in the garden, etc. And it happens that at first it seems to have bitten only in the house. And then a person began to notice that bites appear in the office and on the street and everywhere. So, if the bites appear when you are only in one place, for example in the bed, and when you leave this place parasites do not bite you anymore, then you are bitten by the so-called temporary parasites. Parasites that live the usual invertebrate life away from your body and only come to you from time to time to suck blood. That is, they do not live on you. From our entire list, these are either bedbugs or fleas or mosquitoes or gamazit mites or argus ticks. And if the bites about the same strength, frequency and with the same manifestations appear wherever you are, then they are caused by stationary parasites that live permanently either on your body or inside your body or on your clothes. From the list above, these are lies of all types and each mites. You will agree that now it is easier to choose from either the first five parasites or from the last four. Let's start with temporary parasites, because they are more likely to cause problems with identification. Remember or check if bites sometimes appear in some kind of chains. Three to four bites in a row. If so, then these are bad bugs. But this sign should be considered reliable if such tracks appear regularly. After all, if three mosquitoes bite next to each other for one part of the body from which the blanket has slipped, then their bites can also accidentally line up in a chain. But this will not happen regularly. If the chains appear systematically, then these are bad bugs. If the bites appear two by two, in pairs, with a distance of a couple of millimeters from each other, this is a sign of fleas. Flea bites, on the other hand, seem to be a little more painful than bed bug and mosquito ones, partly due to the specific structure of the mouth organs and the composition of the saliva of the flea, partly because fleas often bite during the day and people clearly feel their bites, while bed bugs bite at night when a person is asleep. But this is quite subjective. Again, everyone's sensitivity is different. Next, uh, what time of day do new bites appear? If they appear in the morning, then the insects bite at night when you are in bed. Therefore, there are either bed bugs or mites or mosquitoes. If the bites appear regularly during the day, then you are bitten by fleas. Here I am often objected that bed bugs can bite during the day and even in reference books they write that hungry bed bugs can crawl out to bite in the daylight if they smell a person. Yeah, they crawl out, but bed bugs are not so hungry regularly. We are now talking about bites that appear constantly, every night or every few days. It is normal for bed bugs to feed once every three or four days. Even once a week is comfortable for them. And if you regularly sleep in a room and bed bugs here have the opportunity to bite you at least once every few days when you sleep, then they will not be hungry enough and they will not bite you regularly during the day. Therefore, if regular bites appear during the day, then these are not bed bugs. But even if exactly a bed bug bites you in the daylight, you can easily catch it in the daylight, look at it and identify it as a bed bug. And even if you cannot identify it, but you can catch it, so catch it, take a picture and send the photo to my mail. If it's a bed bug, I will recognize it for sure. So we figured it out, right? If the bites appear throughout the day and even in the late afternoon, these are probably fleas. Check your pets and their bedings, look at the edges of the parquet and baseboards, collect dust from hard to reach corners with a broom. This way you can find both adult fleas and their larvae. If new bites appear in the morning, after night, then they are caused either by mosquitoes or by bed bugs or by mites. At the same time, mites and ticks can also bite during the day. But due to their slowness, especially in soft ticks, it is difficult for them to chase a person moving around the room. So they bite mostly sleeping people. If you regularly find chains of three or four blisters among all the bites, then you were bitten by bedbugs. Next, 
mosquitoes cannot get under the blanket. Therefore, if you are bitten only on the parts of your body that are not covered with a blanket, face, hands, feet, it is very likely to be mosquitoes. And vice versa. If you are bitten also for those parts of the body that were under the blanket, then it is crawling parasites, bed bugs or mites. One more sign is that in temperate climates, mosquitoes do not bite in winter. If the temperature outside is around freezing and you get bitten at night, it's not mosquitoes. And one more thing, by the way. In the places of compact numerous bites of bed bugs, sometimes remain hemorrhages, look like dark red spots. This happens if many bed bug larvae bite in one place at the same time. Such hemorrhages under the skin do not remain after mosquito bites. More difficult if you have definitely excluded fleas and mosquitoes and you have to find out whether you are bitten by bed bugs or mites or ticks, red mites or red mites or pigeon ticks or poultry ticks. There are no ways to distinguish bites of these parasites only by circumstances on which they were left and you have to look exactly for parasites. Catch them and identify them by their appearance. And finding them and catching them is a particular amusing quest. Bed bugs almost always hide in a sleeping place. Under the mattress of the bed or in the drawer of a folding sofa. All of this needs to be taken apart and inspected. If there are bed bugs here, you will find them and be able to catch them. If there are no parasites in the bed, Inspect the walls, baseboards and furniture around the bed. Here you can find both bed bugs and mites. And Argus sticks are large enough and easy to spot. They usually climb into the rooms through the windows as they migrate here from bird nests and rarely crawl far from the windows because of their slowness. It is therefore necessary to inspect the windowsill both from below and from above. The curtains, the floor under the window and the window frames with all of the cracks in them. The biggest problems arise with finding and identifying of gamazit mites. Red mites, red chicken mites and some others. They are very small, less than one millimeter in length. And not all people can see them at all. Therefore, it is better to inspect the furniture with a magnifying glass. And remember at the same time that no arthropod should live in a sleeping place and near it. If something runs here, then it can only feed on you. Therefore, whatever you meet here, catch it and identify it. Strictly speaking, soft ticks can bite during the day. But since they do not run very fast and do not jump like fleas, they cannot bite people walking around the house. Therefore, they mostly bite sleeping people in bed. Let's summarize. If they bite at night, even parts of the body covered with a blanket, leaf chains of free four blisters, then these are bed bugs. If there are no such chains, it can be or bed bugs or mites. If they bite at night for only open body parts, one bite at a time, then these are mosquitoes. If they bite during the day, they are fleas. So we are done with the first group. In the second group, distinction between bites of stationary parasites is even easier. As we know, stationary parasites live permanently on a person or on his or her underwear and can bite him or her at any time, wherever he or she is. Here, first of all, you need to check whether there are in fact bites in the places where you feel itching. The main sign of scabies, there is itching but no bites, because each mite doesn't actually bite. It gnaws through the skin and this causes itching. And when you scratch these places on skin, redness and spots appear and you can mistake these scratches with a bites. If you analyze your feelings, it feels like you are being bitten under the skin. This is the main distinguishing feature of the itch mite. In fact, nothing bites you, but the skin itches. And only what you need to do, do not scratch, but look at the place that itches. If there is no redness, bumps and no any visible insect, but there is an itch, then it itches inside the skin and this is an itch mite that itches. If you look very closely at where the skin is itchy, but where you have not scratched it yet, you can see the subcutaneous passage of the mite with the naked eye. It looks like a long whitish tubercle that rises above the skin by a fraction of a millimeter, as if a thin needle has been inserted into the skin. 
For more clarity, you can smear the skin here with iodine. It does not hurt. Well, if the skin is not scratched, then it does not cause pain. But the passage of the mite will be colored darker than the skin around it. You will get such a dark brown line on the background of yellow spot on healthy skin. And no parasites, except each mites, leave such marks, especially on the hands. If you find such marks, then make an appointment with a dermatologist. And keep in mind, with scabies any part of the body can itch, not only hands. Even if the back or leg temporarily itches, it can also be scabies. Usually with scabies, the hands become infected first and from them the disease spreads throughout the body. So if the hands are affected, it is almost certainly scabies. And if the hands do not itch, but there is itching in other places of the body, then there may be options. If the bites look either like typical small blisters or just red spots, then these are most likely caused by lice. They are relatively easy to identify. If the bites and itching occur only on the head, these are head lice. If they bite in the groin, then the lice are pubic. If bites occur all over the body, then body lice bite you. By the way, in case of body lice bites, it may seem that the insects bite through clothing, both day and night. This happens when the person is dressed no matter whether he or she is asleep or awake. In fact, no parasites in the house bite through clothes, but specifically body lice live on the inside of clothes and bite exactly when it is worn on the body. And therefore, it may seem that they are biting through it. Outdoor mosquitoes can bite through very thin clothes, through t-shirts, for example. But this happens where there are a lot of mosquitoes and where it is obvious that exactly they bite you. Thicker clothes, starting with shirts and sweaters, are already impermeable for them. And if you feel as they bite like through it, then it's probably either lice or scabies. Thick clothes ensue its lice even more. It has deeper seams and accordingly provides more reliable shelters. It is clear that if you are bitten on the head, ask someone to check your hair. Anybody can find with the naked eye both lice and nits glued to the hair. If they bite in the groin, then you also need to check this area somehow, even yourself. And body lice should be looked for on the inner seams of clothes. This is how the louse looks like, and this is how the needs look on the seams of the fabric. This photo was sent to me by the viewer, that is, this is a real body lice. Note, by the way. All biting parasites can be seen with the naked eye, except the itch mites. These mites are too small. Their size is 1 to 2 tenths of a millimeter. And seeing their semi-translucent bodies without a microscope will not be possible. Lice, bed bugs, mosquitoes, fleas and even red mites, though small, are quite visible. So if itching is caused by something invisible, then this is an itch mite. That's all. In most cases, people in their homes are bitten by these invertebrates and in this simple way you can understand exactly what is biting. And knowing the offenders, you can quickly find and neutralize them. But uh, there are three remarks here. First, a lot of people write to me that they were bitten by cockroaches. Right now, not a day goes by without a comment that someone lived in a hostel with cockroaches and cockroaches were biting him or her every night and all night long. And accordingly, the question may arise about how to distinguish the bites from the bites of, for example, bed bugs. Well, there are no distinctions that really have to be made. In a normal, well-kept house, cockroaches do not bite people. They can bite people where there are plenty of them, where they are naturally swarming, and where there is little food and water for them. For example, this is described in stories about the life of sailors in the Age of Discoveries. Say, on ships in tropical countries, cockroaches spawned in mass, food was scarce, and insects began to nibble skin on people's fingers. It's possible. Perhaps in some very disadvantaged homes and maybe areas, this situation can still occur even today. But if you have a normal house and when you go into the kitchen you do not crunch cockroaches covering the floor, they will not bite you. 
On the other side, if you have all littered with cockroaches and you suspect that they bite, then you don't have to guess what might be biting you. In such a messy apartment, you need to eliminate these cockroaches first. And when you eliminate the cockroaches, but the bites remain, then you have to restart this video and start identification again. Second, we didn't talk about stinging insects. Well, you have to agree, not many people get stung by a wasp and think, hmm, isn't it a bad bug that stung me? Yeah, sometimes there are questions, wasp or bee stung, and how to find the sting in the skin, but this is a topic of another discussion. It has nothing to do with constant bites in the apartment. And this is the third, by the way. We have not considered parasites that bite outdoors but do not attack indoors. Firstly, few of the outdoor insects bite you regularly. But if they do, already mentioned it not, for example, people do not question what it is. They know it and take adequate actions. Secondly, if it is possible to classify and somehow identify outdoor insects by their bites in general, then this is a task of a completely different level of complexity, because there are too many outdoor parasites, an order of magnitude more than those that have set at human habitation. Outdoor exoditics and nuts, and mosquitoes, and ants, and cats, and horseflies, and sand fleas, hundreds of them can bite. Even if you make a guide to the bites of outdoor insects, the average person will not be physically able to use it because of its bulky size. And again, people really need to find out what bite them outdoors. Well, they were bitten and they were bitten. It doesn't happen every night or on a regular basis. And lastly, it is very important to understand the damage or skin reactions that are not related to insects at all are often mistaken for bites. Allergic reactions, diatheses in children, various blisters and rashes from contact with certain plants are often mistaken for insect bites. And often even a professional dermatologist finds it difficult to differentiate and diagnose such rashes and blisters. Moreover, it can be an allergy to non-biting invertebrates, to chitin from cockroaches, to dust mice, to skin beetles and the others. But here, on the one hand, you need to consider each element of such rashes. For example, insect bites almost always have puncture points on the skin, which does not happen in allergies or burns from hugweed. On the other hand, you have to actually see the bites. Masters from the pest control services say that each of them, at least once a week, has a call to an apartment where there are no insects at all, but the owners complain that something bite them all the time. It sometimes comes to absurdity. A dressed person, more often a woman, in the middle of the day, proves to the exterminator that something just ran down her leg and beat her, but she cannot find the bite, as well as cannot see and show the insect. And she complains that she is bitten all the time and asked to kill such invisible insects. You see, yeah? There are actually neither insects, no bites, but only hallucinations with sensations of crawling and biting insects. This is actually a symptom of delusional parasitosis, and it has nothing to do with insects or pest control. That is, you should always start finding out what is biting you, only when there are consequences of bites. Bumps, wounds, skin irritations, or when you catch, in fact, the parasite. If there are no insects, no manifestations of bites, but only your feelings, then this is a topic of another video. And you have probably already understood that the surest way to find out what bites you is to catch the parasite, look at it and identify it. To do this, you should do everything in your power. Wake up at night, look at the bed, look at the skin, check your body at the moment of the bite, and when you catch the parasite, the rest is a matter of technique. You either immediately identify it yourself, most people know what a flea or a bed bug looks like, or shoot it, send me photos via email, and I will try to help you with the identification. And after that, you will get rid of parasites and sleep well. well.